Hello! Although it's a bit late, for the 75th anniversary of the Railway series, I wanted to make a model to commemorate it. On the 30th of May 2020, the longest running narrator of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Michael Angelis, sadly passed away, who was very much the voice of Thomas and many happy childhoods. And I think he knows that sometimes the best travels are those we can only dream about. Don't you? No engines ever felt prouder than those on the Fat Controller's Railway. Ha <laughs> ha! said James. Therefore, this model is also dedicated to him. What could be more suiting than a model of the entire Isle of Sodor? This should be a fun project for you to do at home, and a cheap one too. So, I've filmed the progress and I'm going to talk through the design decisions and the mistakes I've made along the way. This is inspired by the huge map of Sodor made by P.R. Wickham, which can be found on the wall of the Audrey study at the Taliesin Railway in North Wales. I highly encourage you to visit as soon as you're able to, and to see the study and the engines yourself. All you need for this wall display is a box frame, some modelling clay, some paint, PVA glue and some patience. I used Hobbycraft's 30x30cm shadow box frame for mine, but there are a range of other sizes to choose from. The important thing to note is that as the model will be 3D, and because Sodor has a mountain, the bigger the gap between the glass and the base, the better. I found that a 3cm deep frame was ideal for mine, but this will vary depending on how large your island will be. The clay that I used is Das air drying clay, needing about half a pack for the whole model. You could use oven drying clay to give you more time to work, but this won't stick as well to the frame. To start off, I printed out a map of Sodor on A4, making sure that even with the borders, it fits nicely within the frame. Cut this out as best as you can in one piece, and make sure to keep little extra bits like the Isle of Man, England, and the scale ruler. I also kept the PowerPoint file that I used to print the island, as this means you can print out another copy if things go wrong. Take the island cutout and lightly blue tack it to the centre. You can measure the distance on either side to make sure it's even, then very carefully try to draw around it. Do the same for the Isle of Man and England if you want to include them too. Do not include Misty Island, it is forbidden. Anyway, I drew little arrows where the rivers meet the sea, because once you start with the clay it'll be difficult to see. Paste a thin layer on a small section and also mix the two together in your hands before sticking it down. Then, again with dots of glue in your fingers, work the clay onto the wooden base until there's a thin layer on the area you're working. I'm making the perimeter of the island first and working inwards so that the shape remains the same, and at this stage making everything level. Hills and cliffs will come later, but you should try and leave slight indents where rivers travel further inland. One thing I recommend, particularly if you're working in sunlight or a hot room like I am, is that you only use a small clump of clay at a time, and make sure that the rest is firmly wrapped up in the shade, otherwise it'll dry up and become difficult to work with. Don't use any clay that feels crumbly, even after mixed with glue, because it'll crack once it's dried. Particularly because this sculpture will spend its entire life vertical, you want to make sure all the clay stays together. Once this first layer of clay is dried, you can remind yourself where the important features are going to be. Taking the printout, you can try to map out where the railway lines, rivers and hills are in pencil. This will mostly be covered over in clay again, but it gives you an indication as to where the gradient changes such as Gordon's Hill or Henry's Tunnel need to be. After this, it's up into the mountains, and I recommend starting with the highest point and working out the lower gradients based on that. For Sodor's case, this means working on Kuldifell Mountain first. It's important that the clay doesn't touch the glass once it's back in the frame, so take the insert or measure 2.5cm and use a ruler as a guideline for the maximum height you can work with. It's always best to leave yourself more room than you think you need. After settling on a height for Kuldifell, I worked outwards across other high points such as Shane Duini, Shen Ven and Ward Fell. I'm mainly using my hands that you have a horribly hairy close-up of, but you can also use other sculpting tools to make more sharp edges. It definitely helps to have an understanding of what the island looks like in particular areas. Some of the peaks have lakes and rivers on them, so you have to make the hills relatively flat to leave enough room for this. Areas such as Croven's Gate we know are named because it's situated within what was a very narrow passage, so it's useful to accommodate this on the model. As the more drastic features on the island dry, you can go over the perimeter again in another layer of clay, and add areas such as cliffs, or leave it as it is to represent beach or farmland areas. 
I want the focus to be on Sodor, but using real life maps I've made a rough representation of the Isle of Man and Barrow in Furness, and filled in where there are gradients here too. Be sure to leave extra room along the edge of the board, so that the insert from the frame has a flat surface to sit on. It may look a mess with the clay that's dried at different times, but if it makes you feel better you can seal up any unwanted gaps or cracks with small bits of clay and lots of glue. But don't be discouraged if it doesn't look how you expected it to, you've already got this far. It can all be fixed with paint. I might have forgotten to film it, but I recommend coating the entire thing in primer once it's dried, because this gives you a flat surface to paint any details on top of. Then with some acrylic paint, do the same as the clay and paint the perimeter of the land first before working inwards. I'm making everything the same shade of green first, but you can also paint it in orange colours for a contour map, or a solid colour if you want to just leave it as a silhouette. After this, I used the paper cutout to outline railway lines and rivers again, and with a thin brush painted over the pencil marks. This is where it helps to have everything in the same colour, because if it isn't neat, you can take the green paint again and tidy it up. Don't build a fear that paint is permanent on models such as this. I've painted all of the Sudrian railways in white, but you could paint each individual line in a different scheme. Once you're happy with this, you can begin to texture the island with varying shades of brown and green for natural areas, and yellow and red for large fields. Again, it's useful to take into account contextual knowledge of the island. The Scarlowy and Culdy Fell areas deal with slate, so you could add a purple or blue tint to these hills, which would be very different to the tone of the China clay pits for instance. Then, with yellow paint and a small mix of brown, you can paint the beaches and riverbanks. Following this, blue paint for rivers, streams and lakes. At the same time, whilst using a thin brush I went around the perimeter with the same blue. This will help to prevent blue from spilling onto the land when you're using a larger brush to paint the sea. If you find at this stage that you've forgotten something that should have been moulded with clay, you can add it in and cover it over with paint again. Here I'm adding lighter shades of green to add a bit of variety. There are several designated woodlands on Sodor, so you could mark these out in a separate colour. When the natural side of the land has taken form, then comes the tricky part, painting the roads. I chose grey to paint these, and it was certainly a challenge following the map where each and every road went, which joins up with which, and reminding myself not to paint over the railway lines. Little black dots mark out areas that are built up, which helps to pinpoint certain towns and villages. It helps to get a high quality version of the map online, so that you can zoom in, so I've linked one in the description. Having accomplished the roads to your liking, it's time to do something a lot more freeing and paint the sea. This will take several coats, but it's really useful <laughs> to have the first layer in a simple blue, just to link everything up. There are definitely more professional ways to paint than how I'm doing now, but later I went over in a darker mix of blue and green, and joined up the estuaries with this as well. That's the main island done, and you can leave it like this if you wish, but it's also nice to decorate the empty space around it. As per the map I was following, I painted the name in cursive writing that was a curse to paint in the corner, bearing in mind that the frame will take up room as well. I went back to the original file for the printout, and printed the scale ruler to the same size, a compass, and a custom made key specifically for the features that I had included. In the top left corner is a little honorary mention to Michael Angelis, and all three of these items were printed, laminated, and tacked on so that they can easily be removed. You could also use card to represent little bridges and tunnels, or little clumps of thread to represent forests. I left mine plain because I believe the scale is a little too small for this, but hey, it's your model, you can do whatever you want with it. Once you're proud of your work, as you should be, it's time to spray it over with matte varnish. Put it in its pride of place back in the frame, then stick it on the wall or give it to a friend. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough. It's something new for me to film a model from start to finish, but I felt this one works very well with any age, and it acts as either a gift or as a personal project. Do be sure to read the description for additional links and guidance. If you'd also like to join my Patreon, I'd highly appreciate it, and you can have a proper discussion with me, or get to see these models and videos before everyone else. Thank you! A big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, particularly Brighton Terrier, Alex Goodman, GBH Train, Donald9 and Douglas10, 
and HS4000 Kestrel.